Yorana, and welcome to Filled with His Love. We haven't talked much about attachment theory recently, but I saw a new study that caught my eye the other day, and I think it's a nice follow-on to the last episode about greed and fear. The title of the study, if you want to read it, is Link Between Anxious Attachment and Materialistic Values Revealed in a New Psychology Study. It was published in the Journal of PsyPost, P-S-Y-P-O-S-T. So one reason I like this study is that they included 2,000 people in their study. If they had 200 or only 20, I may not have been attracted to it. But there are lots of studies with only a few in the sample. But 2,000, that's often enough to draw some conclusions from. So I, I like this. They surveyed all of these 2,000 with what they called a set of quite simple questions about their relationships with others and their consumer patterns. In other words, their buying patterns, what kinds of products they buy, bought and how often. So this is what they found in this study. They found that those with an anxious attachment style were significantly more materialistic and had a greater propensity to purchase status signaling goods than those with avoidant or secure attachment styles. They did not go into detail in the study about what status signaling. Now, they did not go into detail in the study about how they defined status signaling goods, but we can imagine pretty easily. They probably bought cars and clothes and houses and jewelry and all kinds of worldly possessions that signaled to others that they had money, that they were successful in the terms of the world. I was intrigued with their findings on several levels. First, it makes sense to me that people who have a hard time forming a secure relationship with someone else because they fear that the relationship might not work try to buy their way out of out. They try to buy their way out of this fear or buy their way into the relationship by securing these status signaling goods. Trust is such an important feature of any relationship, and those with an anxious attachment style have difficulty trusting others because they are so worried about not being lovable and that maybe their love will not be returned. So they turn to tangible things they can buy. They buy a new car and feel secure with their relationship with the car. The trust that it will be they trust that it will be in the garage the next morning. They buy an expensive dog because they know the dog will not desert them. And maybe, just maybe, someone will be impressed by their status signaling purchases so that they will want to form a relationship with them. So second, there's a greed thing going on here, as we discussed in the last episode. Once you place your trust in the things, in, in just all kinds of things, at, rather than people, you become attached to them rather than becoming attached to God and to others. So both greed and fear may be far too present in those who have an anxious attachment style. And those two emotions squeeze out love. So ironically, the very love they seek gets farther out of reach. If someone senses that another person buys nice things so they can impress you, you probably won't be very impressed. At the end of Nephi's psalm, in 2 Nephi 4, he says, I will not put my trust in the arm of flesh. Where will he put it? With God. The scriptures are replete with warnings against materialism, seeking after the things of this world. The more we become attached to them, the more we draw away from the Lord. There's some pretty pointed irony in this study about anxious attachment and materialism. Think of the person who feels distant from God but wants to be close to him. If that person has an anxious attachment style, he or she might feel unworthy to be loved by God. But their continual focus on worldly goods does not help them to feel worthy. God is not impressed with someone's possessions. Consider the encounter between Jesus and the rich man. Sell all that thou hast and come follow me. But the rich man could not do it. 
He was too attached to the things of the world. He wanted a relationship with the Savior, but could not part with his possessions. Greed and fear and a host of other unsavory emotions, like lust and envy, diminish or eliminate our capacity to love. So my hope is that if you know someone who seems to try to buy their way into a relationship or buy their way out of anxiety, (laughs) you will share this episode with them. They are likely unaware of the connection between their behavior and their difficulty with forming secure relationships. And in the end, being able to form secure, healthy relationships is really the most important thing we can do in mortality. Healthy, secure relationships with each other and healthy, secure relationships with God. Hope this is helpful, and we will see you next time. Maururu.